This is not a very good hunting channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up a mock scrape and maybe get in a little bit of trail maintenance. Stick around. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm out in the back end of the uh, property. I'm going to my newest stand and I'm going to set up a another mock scrape. Um, I learned about mock scrapes few years ago um, when using licking branches uh, but back then it was mostly tying a branch of a tree onto another tree that extends a little bit further out and then you just scrape up and around underneath it um, I was doing that for about a year or so and getting mixed results um, but I then stumbled upon um, Jeff Sturgis and um, his channel uh, Whitetail Habitat Solutions and he has a way of doing them where you take a vine and you tie it up into the tree or wherever between two trees along a uh, path and since I've been doing it that way I'm getting much more interest and the buck that I shot in 2019 I actually have pictures of it checking out the uh, mock scrape and the hanging vine um, right where I ended up shooting him well right close anyways it was in the same area um, and that's where I have the uh, one of the food plots going this year so I mean, in my experience, they um, they do their job. They get interest. Um, now, that particular one wasn't directly hanging into a um, a trail or a path. Um, oh, gross! And um, or partridge, something. Anyway, um, one second. Mosquitoes all over me. Okay. Um, so yeah, so it wasn't hanging directly on a path. Uh, this time, I've been well. Last year and then this year, I started setting them up on directly on trails. Okay. Uh, I'm out here at a um, mock scrape that I set up earlier this year. Um, it's at the new stand location, which is between two trails that run alongside of it, uh, heading to the apple orchards and the soybean fields. So, um, on 
one side I have this um, hang mock vine. Well, it's a real vine, sorry, it's a scrape, mock scrape with a hanging vine. I didn't get that correct. So, this one was easy to uh, put up because I was lucky enough to have a tree that was overhanging a trail. Um, this trail, you can see on the left there, it goes that way and that way, and then it branches off here. And it runs down through here and into the right there. There's also a trail that comes this way too that feeds up. So there's the, uh, and it heads down to the uh, apple orchards and the soybean fields. Uh, I put it here, not only because this tree was very convenient, but my tree stand that I'll be hunting out of is right off in the distance. Um, kind of see it there, let me get it from, I don't know if you can see that, so that's it there, but that's the, uh, the landscaping fabric I have on the tree, and that, that bright part is, whoops, okay, well, anyway, th those are the arms of the tree, uh, tree stand, and that is the black fabric that is up against the tree where my back is. So that is about, let me zoom out here. That's about 25, 30 yards to this spot right here. So hopefully this is the one I have high hopes for, but because there's another trail that runs on the other side of that tree stand, I'm gonna go put one over there. Uh, the problem with that is that there's no trees that overhang the trail. So because no trees are overhanging, I got to throw up a rope in between two trees and hang the vine off of that rope. Um, it's not ideal, but uh, I'll give it a shot. Hopefully it's just enough of a, a distraction for anything walking by that trail. Again, it'll be within sight of my stand. Uh, so anything walking by that's uh, that trail will be more interested in that hanging vine than looking around for me. And uh, I don't know if it's going to be positioned in such a way that I can take a shot while it's looking at that, or it'll be either on the way to it or coming from it. Uh, but as long as it slows it down so that I can get ready for the shot and it won't see me. So. I'll, uh, I'll get going on that and uh, hopefully it's not too much of a pain to get it. To... Okay, well, um, I cleared off um, a section here. Let's see if you can see it. Let's see, that little area there is between two trees. And that's a trail leading up that way. And let me. And this is a trail leading to the open field and then to the swamp back uh, back a ways on the neighbor's property. So trail leads that way. So these are the two trees I'm going to be using for that one, and this one. Um, my stand is actually right there, so I'm pretty exposed here. Um, technically, where the branch is going to hang, I got or the, the vine. I got several vines to choose from. I think I'm going to go with that one that I have leaning up against a tree. Um, but I have several. Sorry, um, where the branch, the vine is going to hang, is probably. Let's say right about here. So this is what they're going to be looking at to find my stand. Now, obviously, in the fall, those leaves are going to be gone, but it's going to be a lot of sticks in the way, which shouldn't be a problem with a shotgun. Um, but as they're coming down this trail, 
uh, I'm hoping that uh, they're not going to be, well, they're going to be used to this by the time fall comes around and they'll be more focused on what's hanging here and they'll come into that. Uh, coming from the fields would be no problem, but that would mean a early morning sit and getting out here early in the morning without uh, disturbing anything. I don't know if I'll be able to get here early enough. And it might not be uh, late enough for shooting light. So I'm thinking this is going to be an evening only stand. But we'll see how it goes. We'll see. I'll put up a trail camera after and see what kind of pictures I'm getting. But a little bonus here. As I was looking for vines, which are everywhere, um, I stumbled upon right. 15 yards from my tree stand is another apple tree. Which is actually producing quite a lot of apples. So that's a little bonus. And you see my stand from up there. my stand there see the ladder and stuff so right through this apple tree is my stand that's pretty sweet um, yeah so I think this is gonna be a pretty good spot for this um, when I was in here in the winter time the trail was more worn down uh, right now it doesn't look like it's too used but that might just be because it's not really a summertime area, which is ideal. They're, they might only be coming here in the fall when the uh, soybeans are good or when the apples are dropping, um, which is when I'm going to be out here hunting. So, bonus for me. Um, so I'll get that set up. I wanted to say, for doing this scrape itself uh, in the ground, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. I've used sticks before. Um, like you just find a, a branch that's fallen off a tree and you hack away at the vegetation. Um, but if you look, this is the vegetation that I'm hacking through here. It is thick, thick crap. Um, so instead of using a stick, I got smart and and using the garden mattock. So it has the uh, grub hole on that end and a pick on that end. So I mostly use it for fixing the uh, the roadway in um, because uh, in the springtime when I'm turkey hunting the road the roadway in or the driveway is uh, pretty muddy and so my truck sits and sinks down into it uh, so after it dries out I go back over with the mattock and I fill in all the ruts that I, I caused. Same thing with the ATV trail. Um, but yeah, so that made short work of all that vegetation. Because you want to clear out a little circle around where your um, licking branch is, or in this case the hanging vine, um, to mimic an actual scrape uh, from when the buck is tearing up the uh, ground underneath it. So, uh, without further ado, I'll uh, get hydrated, and then I'll, um, I'll start throwing up vine to get the vine hanging over top. All right, so as I'm uh, unraveling this, this is just a piece of thin wire, almost like a clothesline. It has a metal wire in it with a rubber or plastic casing inside of it. Um, I was gonna use string, like uh, twine, but I find uh, sometimes if the trees move a bit or if the, uh, the weight of the 
vine, them rubbing on it, can wear away at the um, the guy line between the trees. It can wear it away and then the, the vine just falls off. So I'm going to tie the vine to this and it shouldn't break at any point, no matter how much they're rubbing on it or, or how much the wind is blowing the vine. So, um, yeah, just look online. Uh, I think this actually came with like, this actually is from a uh, pool cover. You get those uh, winter uh, winter pool covers and they'll kind of come with some kind of a thin line like this to tighten it down to hold the pool cover down. Um, but I'm sure that you can find it under other names. Just a small little thin, thin clothesline type thing. Now, um, I have to get this thrown over one tree and then thrown over to the other tree. Uh, normally I have a set of uh, big machine um, bolt, uh, nuts and uh, I tie the end of this over the nuts, throw it over the tree. Um, I don't have them right now, of course, so I'm going to have to find something else. Um, thinking maybe these, but because of the way that they're set up, if I get it stuck someplace, I might not be able to get them back out. So, I don't know. I'll see what I can do over there. In the meantime, I'm trying to get this unraveled. <laughs> here now because it's so slippery it doesn't really have it wants to back off See, that's not very good. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a zip tie on it and tighten it all down and hopefully that will keep it tight okay so here it is with the zip tie um, it's crushing it down pretty good so hopefully the uh, the line that goes up the tree. I'll give it one more loop because as of right now, every time this moves, you can see it, it kind of pulls up that thing, that branch. Uh, I guess it's not the end of the world. It's kind of stuck on up. There we go. Yeah, there. Now you can see. See how it moves when I pull on it. I don't have to shake my can off, but I'll wrap it around that uh, that branch one more time and then go on to the next tree. Uh, so this is what I rigged up to uh, use as a weight to throw the guy line over. Uh, again, it has the knot here is slipping, but it's wrapped around tight, so it should be okay. Okay, well, we got it up. Um, I just have to do a little bit more clearing um, for the actual scrape part. I just cleared a, a spot that I could work. Uh, so I have it up and I have, just, that's it there. And the line it's attached to is fairly thin. I was lucky enough to have a vine on this side, so I use that vine. So it's about 10 feet in the air, and it's hanging down to about 
four feet off the ground kind of thing. So from where it's sitting, um, can't really see my stand from there. There it is there, that black spot in the middle. So there's the stand. And there's the vine. So, all in all, it went well. There it is from another angle. And my stand out there. So again, it's about maybe 15 yards from my stand. Might even be able to use my crossbow from here, but I'm very exposed. This is a good window right here for shooting something with a crossbow because there's no sticks in the way, but I'm exposed. Anyways, so I'll tidy this up a little bit more, clear out uh, a little bit more of these uh, plants and then that's it I'll uh, come back another day at some point um, and I'll try to uh, get a camera on this to see how it's doing but it, it might not be till closer to the fall anyways to get a camera on this so hopefully you guys found that interesting uh, it wasn't all that hard to do it's much easier when you can get a uh, get to the tree and just have one tree. You don't have to loop a, a line between the two of them, but it's not the end of the world if that's the only place you can make one. Anyways, uh, hope you found it interesting and take care.